Ladies and gentlemen, introducing our next 2008 California Russin Hall of Fame inductee, Mr. Gary D. Bowian. <laughs> Presenting the award to Gary are two individuals. First, Jack Fernandez. Jack was Gary's high school coach, and Jack is our first year class of 2007, correction, class of 2000 Hall of Famer. Also presenting this award with Jack is Gary's son, Dr. Damien DeBovian, who was Orange County Athlete of the Year in 1996. <laughs> Gary DeBovian was a state freestyle champion in 1964, junior national AAU champion and community college champion in 1967. He was also a senior open freestyle and Greco Roman champion. And from 1964 through 1966, Gary was an Olympic development, development high school and open champion. Gary has 34 years of coaching experience with high school, college, and at the international level. His coaching record is 245 wins and 50 losses. Gary coached at Miracosta and West Torrance, which in 1960, correction, 1976, they were third in the state. Gary also volunteered at El Toro and Temecula Valley High Schools. Gary's instrumental in starting the wrestling programs at Urban High School, Santa Ana College, he also started the city championships and the best of the West wrestling camps located here in Southern California. On seven occasions, he was selected as both the Community College State Regional Coach of the Year and the Orange County College and High School Coach of the Year. In 1993, Gary was inducted into the National Wrestling Coaches Association Hall of Fame. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Gary DeBovian will be inducted into the 2008 California Wrestling Hall of Fame. Mr. Gary DeBovian. It's going to take me 10 minutes to just get all the paperwork out. <laughs> this is a more of a how I got involved in wrestling as a high school athlete and a coach. In 1961, there was a buzz on the campus at Maricosta High School. That buzz was the invasion of the Japanese national team, a team that nearly won every weight class at the Far Western Open Tournament in San Francisco. On my way home, walking by the main gym, I ducked my head inside and felt the electricity of something big was about to happen. Not having 35 cents to get into the gym, my high school football coach, Jack Fernandez, who would be later a father figure to me and a mentor, said, hey kid, let me get you inside. As is expected, the Japanese team dominated the matches. But it was the last match that people were up on their feet. Costa, Maricosa's wrestling god, Ron Gilbert, had just tied the national champion. The fans went nuts, and wrestling coach Jack Fernandez carried it, Ron off the mat. It was then I was hooked on wrestling. I went out for the team the next year. In a short two years later, I also found myself wrestling the Japanese national team, only to lose my match by one point in the last period. I had my head down, and I was walking around, and another guy named Bob Anderson came over to me and said, hey, Bob, I have a move that might work for you. Guess what? That move caught Mike Lego on his back for a fall, almost a fall en route to a California state title and a near ticket to Japan. After two week Russell off camp in Fresno, I found myself along with teammates, Ron Valance and Dennis Choate and a new friend, Jay Robinson from Mountain Gill High School going to Japan. You know the Jay Robinson that's winning the national titles in Minnesota. Looking back at the tournament, I look at my weight class. Mike Lego and Kent Wyatt were fourth and fifth, both NCAA champions. Out of high school, I had the opportunity to wrestle at Cal Poly, and I went to El Camino. Um, something I will always regret, not wrestling for Hitchcock, a legend in wrestling. But I learned a lot from observing Hitchcock as a wrestler and coach. 
After winning the Junior Nationals and transferring to Long Beach, I had a second major knee operation that ended my career as a wrestler. Then I tried the professional world and went to college part-time to graduate. But after three years, I found myself laid off from the work in the aerospace business. Wrestling again was there for me. Coach Fernandez wanted me to coach as an assistant coach. After two seasons, I had finished my credential and I went back with my friend Kent Wyatt and coached at West Torrance. Being at the first high school state tournament, which was a vision of Lynn Dyke, I knew I, at that time I wanted to be a head coach. But life was good at West. We were the Southern Section Masters champions and third in the state. But I still had that burning desire to be a head coach. So I moved to Orange County and started the new program at Irvine High School. And later on went on to restart the program at Santa Ana College. I had great coaches along the way. John Phillips, Rick Laura at Irvine, Frank Gonzalez, Frank Adelman, and Carl Glover at Santa Ana College. We were constantly in the top 10 of state with 30 All-Americans and over 45 state place winners. But later I stepped down to work with my kids and coach them. But I'm looking back, I'm back at Santa Ana College working with guys like Vince Silva and guys like Bill Clevis. They're winning the state and their walk-ons putting a tremendous, a lot back into the sport. As a coach, you like to think about your state champions and they carry on the torch as coaches for you. Guys like Matt Padgett, who pinned everyone in the state, Arnold Albert and Campbell, who are at Temecula, winning. At your buzzer, <laughs> <laughs> winning over 20 CIF titles. Thomas Zach at El Dorado, Burgess and Neatering House at Edison. Uh, I'll cut this short. These guys stand out in my mind first, but I would like to thank every high school and college wrestler that wrestled for me. It was a privilege for me to coach you. I would like to thank my wife, Jody, for all her support and my kids for getting into sport and getting great, getting awesome grades in college. I would like to thank the committee and the sport of wrestling. Thank you.